You know, in the 60s and 70s, it was a really popular household item. It was called a lava lamp, and you might have seen them, or you might even have one in your house. They're a really funky lamp, groovy lamp, excuse me, that has in it oil and a wax and a light bulb. And when you turn it on, and you have to wait a little bit, about 10, 15 minutes, the wax inside the lamp begins to rise up through the oil. And it gets to the top, and all of a sudden it sinks back down. And it makes this weird cycling blobs that move around. What's actually happening in that lamp? And really, what does that have anything to do with your science? Well, in this video, we're going to see conduction and convection. And we're going to come back and we'll see exactly what's happening in a lava lamp. And maybe why they call it a lava lamp. Well, in this video, we're going to be doing two very specific things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss how heat is transferred in our planet and how heat is transferred on any object. In particular, we're going to define two of those ways. They're called conduction and convection. We're going to do these two things. Really, heat on our planet Earth really comes from two different routes. The first way, it could come from inside the Earth. If you go deep down into our Earth, you hit our inner core and our outer core, and those are really hot places, many thousands of degrees. And that's because it's made up of radioactive material that's breaking down and releasing heat and energy. It warms up our mantle and creates lava, or magma. That's one way. The other way we get heat on our planet is from the sun. The Earth, the sun, sends out solar radiation and light, and it hits our planet and warms us up. We call that radiation. Now, some of that sunlight is reflected back out to space by clouds and space and land and people and everything else. But other pieces are absorbed. And we can see in the climate change videos different ways that the sunlight can be absorbed. The energy that is absorbed is transferred all around the Earth. And <coughs> that could be, excuse me, either through, uh, through the Earth and, G and uh, magma, or it could also be through our clouds, through the atmosphere. Well, there's a couple ways that the Earth transfers heat. And the first way is something called conduction. And actually, everything transfers heat this way. And conduction is defined as the transfer of energy from one substance to another by direct contact. And I can give you a very good example of this. At my house, my wife's feet are always freezing. I don't know what it is, but she's always really cold. And one of her favorite activities is to sit on the couch next to me and put her ice-cold feet on me to warm them up. Really, what she's doing is she's taking my warmth to use to her. She's using conduction. She's taking heat directly from one thing by physical touch. Trust me, she puts her feet on me. They're cold. Energy always flows from hot to cold, and so the energy is flowing out of me and into her. The same thing happens when you might touch a warm, uh, warm pot. The pot is warm, you touch it, it is transferring heat. Energy is always moving from hot to cold. Now, we can think of it a certain way. When air, for instance, comes in contact with something hot, it receives that warmth. So when sunlight hits the earth and absorbed by the earth, it warms up and it warms the air around it because they're in contact. Same thing would happen with rock. When magma comes to the surface, it warms the rock around it because it touches it and it creates warmer rock. That's conduction. That's fairly simple. The second way, though, is a little bit more complicated. It's something called convection. And convection is a really important process for the Earth. Convection is defined as the transfer of heat through a circular path in a liquid or gas. And so you don't get this in the solid. It has to be liquid or gas. And when you heat something up, it makes a circular path. Now, you've probably seen something like this. And you've probably heard, you heard someone say, well, hot things rise and cool things sink. Which is true, but it's a little simplified. Really, what we should say is that when something's warmer, it expands. And when it expands, it becomes less dense. There's less stuff in that space, and it floats because it's less dense. And when it cools, it's the opposite. When you cool something, it shrinks, it becomes more dense, and so it sinks. It really is that hot things become less dense and cool things become more dense. Well, that process will create what is called convection, and it's also what's making the lava lamp so groovy. So, let's look at that lava lamp. 
conduction is warming from that light bulb is warming up the glass in the lamp and it's also heating up the oil and the, uh, the wax. When the wax gets warm and liquid, it starts to expand and becomes less dense. So it floats back up away from the light bulb. As it moves up and away from the light bulb, it's starting to cool. And when it gets to the top, it isn't, it's colder. So it shrinks and becomes more dense and sinks back down. That's what makes the loop of a lava lamp. It can also be seen in our atmosphere. As the sun warms up the earth around our pole, I'm sorry, around our equator, it warms up the air. The air rises up through the troposphere next to the stratosphere where it's colder and begins to sink because it's colder and it dense and becomes more dense and it makes a big loop. So we have a loop in our atmosphere. You also might see it in the mantle. Next to our inner core and our outer core, it is hotter. So magma in our mantle gets warmer down by the outer core and rises up towards the surface. The surface is colder. So at the surface, it cools down, becomes more dense, and sinks back down. It creates loops. These circles, they're currents or convection currents. They're a really important process for moving energy around our planet. Well, what did we do in this video? We did two things. The first thing is we discussed how heat is transferred to an object. It can be uh, the heat on the earth either comes from our inner core, outer core, or it comes from the sun. Very little is actually generated by us. That heat can be transferred. Then we looked at heat, how heat is transferred. And we looked at conduction, which is heat being transferred through physical contact. And convection, the circular path that heat and energy can move around in a liquid or gas. So I want to remind you how these videos work. You could always go back and watch it again or hit pause if I'm going too fast. Or just rewind a certain part. But always remember to keep moving forward.